practitioners offer something unique to help you. You can pre-book practitioners before going to the event and even possibly win a gift basket by visiting five or more practitioners at the fair. Also, if you pre-book and prepay for a 30-minute session, you get a weekend pass for Maria's classes for free, normally a $59 value. And the first 25 people who show up Saturday and Sunday will get a free gift bag. Charvinity Psychic and Healing Fair is May 18th and 19th at the Doubletree by Hilton, Minneapolis Airport, 9 to 5, both days. It's only $10 to get in. Visit charvinityfairs.com for all the details. Are you one of thousands of individuals who know you have psychic abilities but don't know how to tap into your higher self? Refined Divine is an extremely gifted psychic medium who offers classes that can help you reach your goals. Refined Divine holds classes Monday and Thursday at our two locations and via Zoom. Classes consist of manifestation, learning psychic abilities, shadow work, and healing trauma. Refined Divine has helped thousands, and she can help you. This is Psychic Medium Deb. You can go to refinedivinepsychic.com. With a look at your AM 950 weather, I'm Patrick Lilia. Cloudy tonight with a low of 40, then showers and storms expected Tuesday with a high of 73. Cafe Latte is unlike any restaurant you've ever experienced. Grab a tray and pick from their award-winning selections of soups, salads, sandwiches, and mouth-watering desserts. Cafe Latte, Victoria Street and Grand Avenue in St. Paul, or CafeLatte.com. Portions of the following program may be pre-recorded. Now, it's time to step into the unknown. There are things people experience but never talk about. A shadow moving in the corner, flickering of the lights, a disembodied voice. We invite you to talk with us, share your story, share your experience, because this isn't just your story, this is our story. This is Ghost Box Radio with Greg Bakken. And this is Ghost Box Radio on AM 950, where every night we talk about the paranormal, ufology, Bigfoot, and so much more. My name is Greg Bakken. Thank you very much for joining me tonight. I also wanted to thank everybody uh, for all the kind words that you said about last Friday's show. When we, uh, we, we talked a lot about the weather, as uh, if you listened, you will know, and we talked a lot about severe weather, we talked about a tornado that came through my hometown 40 years ago that night. And uh, we also uh, really excited that Justin, the storm chaser, uh, called in from his day out in Iowa, ke- connecting and, and photographing and documenting so many amazing tornadoes that day. Obviously, we we mourn for any loss of life on any destruction, but tornadoes themselves, they're very beautiful. And uh, there is something that's alluring to a lot of us that go out and we try to uh, to look for these wonderful, uh, frightening pieces of nature. But uh, it was it was very exciting and it was great to have uh, him call in. And then also, uh, folks, you know, this is Monday, Tuesday it sounds like that there is more severe weather that's going to be down in the Iowa area that actually um, the threat extends into Southern Minnesota, as well as even possibly getting over to uh, the twin cities area, at least a slight risk of it. So, you know, we'll probably be talking about it a little bit tomorrow as well, but also make sure that if that's the case, everyone be safe out there as well, especially if you're going out and doing some storm chasing yourself. I'm really excited uh, tonight because uh, I'm going to have on a guest that I I really like, and uh, she has a great deal of experience and a lot of stuff to talk about. So we're going to kind of, we might even jump around a little bit tonight. Uh, Christina George is a multifaceted individual deeply immersed in the realms of the paranormal. As a seasoned paranormal investigator, psychic, and abductee, She possesses a unique perspective and insight into the mysterious and unexplained. Christina's journey into the unknown has led her to explore the depths of the supernatural, uncovering truths that defy conventional understanding. In addition to her intriguing personal experiences, Christina is the esteemed host of the Paranormal Connections radio show, where she delves into discussions about the supernatural, bringing together experts and enthusiasts alike to explore the mysteries of the universe. With her keen intuition, profound understanding of the paranormal, 
Christina continues to captivate audiences and shed light on the enigmatic forces that shape our world. Christina, welcome to Ghost Box Radio. Hey, Greg, thank you so much for having me in tonight. Oh, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And, you know, uh, first of all, uh, anyone who uh, hasn't done so yet, please uh, go and check out uh, Paranormal Connections radio show. Where can people get that? Oh, I'm across all social media platforms, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter there. It's it's out there everywhere. <laughs> And uh, these are these are really uh, these are very nice deep discussions, which are really nice to get into and uh, kind of get into areas as well that people may may find a little uh, uncomfortable sometimes, don't they? If if you're just coming in and you're kind of and, and kind of getting into this world where there's stuff that you you are always fascinated about, but once you actually get the reality of it, that sometimes is a very different thing. Yeah, absolutely. And this is kind of, you know, the reason I ended up eventually getting into radio. Um, I felt like even with myself, this has been a really personal journey, even though I've been able to help people over time. You know, I have always had abilities. I've always been able to see spirits. I've had psychic abilities since I was very young. And, you know, this didn't come with any kind of instruction pamphlet on what I was supposed to do, why I had these abilities, why it was different than other people. Because again, young, I had no idea that I was different. It wasn't until I really kind of got into school and realized that I was a little different. And I didn't come from a family that was supportive. You know, that was, I came from a time where, you know, if children talked about seeing spirits, uh, we would be told that they were imaginary friends and eventually they would go away and, you know, things like that. But mine never went away. So as time has gone on, this has really been a kind of experience of just kind of learning along the way. And then, you know, based on what I was able to learn, then trying to eventually later on in time, use that knowledge to help other people. but. You know, my life continues to be a big question mark because every time I get some, you know, answers uh, to things that I've been, you know, questioning, I end up with more questions. So, yeah. you know, it comes with a whole nother array of questions. Well, and that was that was what I was going to just uh, just say is that uh, it, it sounds like that uh, partially of what what you are here for is to help people make sense of what they're going through. Absolutely. I mean, early on for 15 years, um, I actually mentored children and teens with psychic abilities along with their parents because it was a time where I so wish I would have had something like that growing up and, you know, somewhere I could go and people understood what I was talking about and they didn't think I was crazy or be scared of me things like that. So I started very small. I just started like normally if I had a client and they had children and that had showed some abilities, I would work with them. Eventually uh, it started to grow. And at that point I was able to kind of do group sessions and where children all over the place, they could, didn't really fit in in school or they would have to be somebody completely. They really weren't in order to fit in at school. So this was somewhere where they, again, had kind of a support group of their own peers where they could talk to each other about like what they were experiencing, what worked for them. And I could give them some direction as well as their families, because, you know, again, I could teach kids all the time. But if the parents don't understand, I'm not there 24 hours. How are they going to know how to continue to help their children moving forward? So I did that for about 15 years. Um, and, you know, helped a lot of children along the way. And so, you know, for that, it, again, there have been blessings along the way. And I definitely always wanted to make, I guess, a mark in somebody's life. I, I, you know, that what I was doing, I helped somebody somehow. 
And, you know, I never really paid a whole lot of attention, but later in time when people come back and they've said, oh my gosh, you have no idea how much you helped me or how much your reading helped me or uh, different things like that of just, or even sometimes just listening to me and believing my story and not, you know, making me feel crazy. That, that means a lot to me. I mean, that means that, you know, I, there's been a reason I'm here and I've give something back to, to make sure to help. And that has, I mean, I, I'm, I, I can't imagine that, that you, 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 you haven't helped people. I know that you have helped people, but I suppose there is a bit of a, a vacuum in a sense that you don't always know because you don't always get feedback or you might even get, if you, I mean, I can imagine like, I always pick up kind of the wrong sort of like, uh, uh, like, I don't know, like, like how people react to stuff. I always seem to read it wrong at the time. So, I mean, it's, it is, it is important uh, to do, but at the same time as well, you know, it, do you find any of helping other people? Does that help you? Um, when I get the acknowledgement that, you know, it's help. Yes. Uh, to be absolutely honest, what I do is probably more detrimental to me than anything. Mm. Um, I suffer from a um, terminal autoimmune illness, uh, then there is no cure for it. And, you know, um, doing readings or anything that, you know, uh, with the paranormal investigating, any of those things would seem to drain me. Mm -hmm. beyond what, you know, sometimes I'd end up in the hospital. I mean, I've been in and out of the hospital, but anyway, I could definitely tell some of the times I would be wiped out. And I never stopped myself. If somebody called me and they needed me, I didn't care. Like, this is, this is what I'm supposed to do. And, you know, early on in my early adult years, I had a near-death experience. And during this near-death experience, I was told that I had to go back. And not only did I have to go back, but I now had to be open about my abilities and I had to use them to help people. And that, you know, really stuck with me because I felt like, okay, um, if it wasn't my time, then obviously I have some kind of path that, that I need to complete before it's going to be my time. And that was it. And so I've always felt like, you know, my days are numbered regardless. I'm I'm a medical mystery because I'm still here, actually. They didn't think that I would be here still. I always say it's way beyond anything that the medical, you know, <laughs> field can tell us. And yeah. I, whenever it's my time, I am completely ready to go. But until that time, my purpose is to help other people and to help to educate where I can. So that's what I've done. And, and again, a lot of times to my own detriment because my health has suffered immensely due to everything that I do in the paranormal. Let me ask you this, uh, because, uh, you know, as we're going to get to in the program tonight, there's aliens involved. Uh, you know, there, there's all sorts of things. When, when you had that near-death experience, who told you that you needed to come, that you needed to go back? You know, it's been, I, to this day, have no idea. Um, I, it was just a man's voice uh, that was directing me. During my near-death experience, I did see my grandfather, who was the first person who, in my family, I was very close with, passed away, and the only relative that ever came back to me to let me know he was okay. Uh, and then I had a ex-boyfriend that, way prior had been murdered in front of me. He was there. Um, some people that I eventually found out were family members, but I didn't know. And then there was a few other people that still to this day, I don't know, but they were all lined up. And, you know, it was like, I just wanted to to be there. And this voice came and said, you know, no, it's, you know, not your time. You, you can't stay here. And, you know, it's funny because I was young and I was, you know, um, very much a rebel and i still kind of am and i was like huh, what do you mean it's not my time i gotta go back i'm here i'm not going anywhere yeah. <laughs> right i i felt very 
comfortable. That's where I, I felt like that's where I was supposed to be. And this thing, you know, again, told me, no, that uh, I had to go back. And and again, I was very, very secretive about my abilities or the anything that I did in the paranormal because it was always anytime it was brought up, it was something very negative. You know, it was a time I'm 57 years old. So, you know, at the time, this was something that was not looked upon, you know, uh, very highly like it is now. Uh, you know, saying the psychic people thought you were a scammer, you know, like, you know, you were Dionne Warwick or Miss Cleo. Uh, so it was, it was hard even trying to fit into the paranormal because I'll tell you, I mean, again, I didn't know what the paranormal was, um, until I saw it on TV and I'm like, oh, wow, <laughs> is this what I do? Because me. I was yeah. good. No, I said, you're saying like, this is me, uh, you know, you're, 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 you're identifying with it. Yeah, but you know they didn't use any psychics back then. They just used no. equipment, you know. And so I'm like, okay, well, this is kind of like what I'm doing, but it kind of not. And so I got into the paranormal so that I could. I joined a group so that I could kind of like understand it a little bit more. And not too long after that was when you know the Dead Files came out and they were using a psychic. And you know it was like overnight. Like then psychics were then, you know, uh, welcome everywhere. And it was like a light switch turned on on social media because like the next day everybody was psychic medium so-and-so. And, you know, every group now had a, their own team psychic. And, you know, and then again, it was flooded with a bunch of fakery, yeah. which then put the real psychics in another predicament because now we were having to prove yet again that are we the real deal, you know, or not. So it, it's been an interesting ride. And so again, I, I'm to go back to your question, I don't know who it was that, you know, told me that it was just a male's voice. And um, yeah, it was, it was something that stayed very, very much, uh, even to this day, a very vivid, you know, um, memory that I experienced and yeah, it, I, and I still don't know, you know, exactly why it couldn't have been my time because I actually died on the operating room, um, yeah. during this time. So I, I'm just going to say that, uh, in my opinion, when, uh, you know, we're talking about the fakery of, of mediums and stuff to me personally, and, and, your mileage may vary on this, that uh, when when the uh, mediums start taking sides on almost anything that is just earthly uh, to me is a is a big problem. I kid you not. I had a psychic medium that was on a TV show who I befriended for a while, and she reached out to me to tell me Abraham Lincoln wants you to vote for. So it's, I won't say who because it doesn't matter. Uh, but, uh, you know, that it. <laughs> I'm not kidding. And it, it <laughs> I'm sorry, it's it's funny actually because but people get people get pulled in by that, unfortunately. Yeah, you know, it's funny and it's sad at the same time. I mean, let's take TikTok, you know, be, for example, because TikTok to? now has blown up, you know, yeah, and especially yeah. in the paranormal field. And there are psychics out there everywhere. They're doing tarot card readings. They're doing psychic readings. And if I hear one more time, like right before the solar eclipse, there must have been a hundred psychics saying, you know, oh, you're going to go blind. Uh, the zombies are kind of come out. Yeah. Uh, you know, the apocalypse is coming. Everything's going to flood. We're going to have a 9.0 earthquake here in California. And, you know, it, it was killing me because I get precog dreams, right? And they're very, very accurate when it comes to weather and, and things that are going to be happening. And I wasn't getting any of that. And so I got, I, so I started questioning myself because I'm like, my God, like every person I scroll through is another psychic saying that, you know, this is all going to happen. And, you know, lo and behold, you know, absolutely nothing happened. And then they'll put out all their new, you know, uh, new predictions. And it's, it's hard. It's hard to watch. It's, you know, so many people, these people are, you know, on these platforms just for money. 
Yep. Uh, they'll just tell people whatever they want. It's a lot of cold reading that I see. Just a lot of very generic readings. Yeah. Just all very suspect. <laughs> all, all very suspect. I mean, you and I can go on. Uh, we have off air. We've gone on about this many, many times. But what I'd yes. like to do, why don't we go ahead and do this? Let's take our first break. When we come back, uh, we haven't even begun talking about precognitive dreams yet. I want to get to that next segment. I think after we start talking to Christina, you're going to have questions. Put them in the comments. We have so much to accomplish here. You're listening to Ghost Box Radio on AM 950. Are you one of thousands of individuals who know you have psychic abilities but don't know how to tap into your higher self? Refined Divine is an extremely gifted psychic medium who offers classes that can help you reach your goals. Refined Divine holds classes Monday and Thursday at our two locations and via Zoom. Classes consist of manifestation, learning psychic abilities, shadow work, and healing trauma. Refined Divine has helped thousands, and she can help you. This is Psychic Medium Deb. You can go to refinedivinepsychic.com. Greg Bakken here. Like you, I love good, fresh, delicious food. So I want to tell you about this treasure in Roseville called Maverick's Real Roast Beef. Maverick's has the best roast beef sandwiches I've ever had. Made fresh every order. Add fries or onion rings dropped in the fryer when ordered, and you have a winning combination. Maverick's Real Roast Beef has a lot more than roast beef, so check out their website, maverick'sbeef.com, or check out their restaurant on Lexington in Roseville. Reach your highest level of consciousness and well-being with metamorphosisconnections.com. Metamorphosisconnections.com is an online directory of the best holistic and metaphysical practitioners to help you make your most informed choices. You can search metamorphosisconnections.com for classes, events, wellness and life coaches, plus metaphysical products and shops. You can also search for a wide array of healers from all modalities, including EFT, sound healing, energy healing, light therapy, ancestral healing, shamanic healing, reflexology, past life regressions, hypnotherapy, yoga, and more. And if you're not sure where to start, the search feature on metamorphosisconnections.com is tailored to help both those who know what they are looking for and those who are just starting. Come explore the possibilities for your higher self by visiting metamorphosisconnections.com. Their experienced practitioners can guide both beginners and those that are already on their spiritual journey. That's metamorphosisconnection.com, your link to direct you on your spiritual transformation. Did you know that spiritual awakening is not all love and light? Surprise! Inner demons, ego deaths, and tower moments are on the horizon. But while life might hand you some harsh lessons, we've got the antidote to soothe your weary soul. Why not try a dragon's bloodbath? Or schedule a Reiki aura repair? With books, herbs, talismans, candles, and more, we put the Shazam in shadow work. Visit Magus Books at 1848 Central Avenue Northeast in Minneapolis or MagusBooks.com. The Tilted Tiki, located in downtown Stillwater, helps you get your tropical tiki vibe on with a large selection of fantastic-tasting tiki cocktails served in unique and fun glasses, a menu of delicious food ranging from small bites, craft tacos, sandwiches, and more. Plus, don't forget they have live music Wednesday through Saturday nights. Located in downtown Stillwater, the Tilted Tiki is your tropical relaxation restaurant in Minnesota. Visit thetiltedtiki.com. Come on out to the Charvinity Psychic and Healing Fair in collaboration with Maria Shaw Minneapolis Convention, May 18th and 19th at the Doubletree by Hilton Minneapolis Airport Hotel, formerly known as the Marriott Airport Hotel. The Charvinity Psychic and Healing Fair features a selection of highly skilled and exceptional local psychic readers, healers, and practitioners ensuring a wide array of premium services like Reiki, past life regression, and so much more. All practitioners offer something unique to help you. You can pre-book practitioners before going to the event and even possibly win a gift basket by visiting five or more practitioners at the fair. Also, if you pre-book and prepay for a 30-minute session, you get a weekend pass for Maria's classes for free, normally a $59 value. And the first 25 people who show up Saturday and Sunday will get a free gift bag. Charvinity Psychic and Healing Fair is May 18th and 19th at the Doubletree by Hilton, Minneapolis Airport, 9 to 5 both days. It's only $10 to get in. Visit charvinityfairs.com for all the details.
And it's this week, finally, Ghost Stories and Beyond returns to Billy's Bar and Grill in Anoka. We're going to be down in the basement as usual. I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, we're going to be listening to some spirit recordings, uh, stuff that I picked up, other people picked up, stuff that I found very interesting that I want to include. I'm also going to include uh, some of the uh, EVPs and stuff that have been picked up at the McIntyre Villa in Atchison, Kansas. It's That's important to talk about because we're going to be doing a show live from Kansas, Atchison, Kansas, at the McIntyre Villa this Friday. So uh, definitely come on out, say hi. $10 a person to get in does not include food or beverages, but don't forget that burgers are half price on uh, on Wednesdays. So it's going to be a great time. I'm really looking forward to it. Welcome back to Ghost Box Radio. My name is Greg Bach and really appreciate you joining us tonight. Tonight, my guest is Christina George. She's a host of the Paranormal Connections radio show. And uh, we're, we're going to kind of uh, get into something here that the uh, uh, reason why I brought her on, actually, we wanted to talk about precognitive, uh, precognitive dreams. Well, at least I did. I, you know, I'm, I'm assuming you did, too, Christina. I mean, I hope. I, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we could talk about whatever. Right? There's plenty of stuff to talk about. But, you know, pre cog dreams, I have been having them since I was a teen. Mm -hmm. um, always the same scenario. Uh, I would go to sleep. I would wake up in the circular room. There would be like a circular pedestal that would be on there uh, in the middle. I would go walk up to it and what would be like kind of like a holographic screen would just show up in front of me. And in on that screen, it would show me different things. Started out when I was young, it was just weather. So, you know, I would see uh, different volcanoes erupting, earthquakes, fires, different things like that. And I'll tell you that geography is probably was my worst subject in school. So mm -hmm. I never knew where any of this stuff, even if I was shown on the map, I'd have to like, when I get up, I'd have to like go and try to look on, you know, a map to see where this area was. Never knew why I had these or what I was supposed to do with them. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and at the very beginning, when I was a teen, things would happen, but they might, I might have these dreams and I would have the same consecutive dreams until one of those things happened and then once that event would happen it would drop off and something else would happen so sometimes it would be once a year sometimes it would be twice a year as to, as i got older they started becoming a little closer and closer uh i was then they started to change uh it was no longer just weather um it was now major events. Um, mm -hmm. I was shown 9-11 uh, about two weeks prior to it happening. Um, and to my surprise, two weeks later on my way to work, um, I was listening on the news and was hearing it like everybody else live as it was taking place. Sure. Um, then it even evolved a little more and I was being shown weather, but it being manipulated. Okay. Uh, and then I was being shown major world events and even false flag events. Oh, so okay. Again, and can you can you tell people what a false flag is for those who don't know? Yeah. So I mean, it would be an event that happened that then you know the press or the media is going to come out and tell you did not happen. Um, it is usually set up by the government to make it look like it might be a terrorist attack or yeah. or something like that. But then it is portrayed something completely different. And yeah. uh, even though evidence will be out there, uh, you know, you'll be, you know, deemed as conspiracy theorist. If you go against what, you know, um, the media, you know, uh, groups out there, mainstream media would want us to believe. So right. I was getting a lot of that information. And again, this is now from my teenage years to my adult years and <laughs> even, you know, currently. And again, I had no idea, like, what am I supposed to do? I knew that these things that they were showing me eventually were coming into fruition. Mm -hmm. 
so I'm like, why am I being shown this? Like, I, there's nothing I can do to stop it, right? I, I don't know who I'm supposed to tell about this stuff. So I really just kept it to myself. And eventually as time went on and I had uh, started my uh, paranormal group and it was um, Psychic and Paranormal Research Society, but I had a division for the paranormal and I had a division for UFOs, abductions, cryptozoology. So I, I had a vast array of investigators that did all different kinds of things. And I felt like they were very connected. and. As I was telling my team and they were like, man, you need to like talk about these on your show. And I'm like, uh, you know, I don't know. Like it, it, it's hard. Like, I don't want to throw anything. First, I was an investigator and I'm a psychic, you know, and it's like now if I'm just throwing out these predictions and stuff, I don't know how the field's going to take it. And they're like, no, you should. So again, I have a good following and I was like, all right, I, I'm safe. I'll put it out there. And at the beginning, I, I could tell that people were very skeptical because now mind you, this was probably 15 years ago when I started, you know, putting them out on radio and over the years they started seeing things happen. And then they were like, Oh wow. And so then people really wanted it. So I was like doing like every other week I was doing a show, you know, an update show. And as soon as something would happen, people would like flood my messages. Oh my gosh, did you see the earthquake that just hit you? You know, you just talked about that. And it something flipped and people started getting scared because they were so accurate. And scared, I started getting scared of, scared of what? Scared of you or scared of the fact that you can see this? I think maybe a little bit of both. Like yeah. people really, you know, they wanted to doubt it so much. And then it was like a little entertaining, but then it got a, like, a little scary accurate. And then yeah people changed and I started getting like hate mail and death threats, you know, mm -hmm. to stop the fear mongering and stop all of this. And, and it, I wasn't prepared for it. So I pulled away and I'm like, okay, look, this isn't what I'm trying to do. So, you know, I walked a, away a little bit from it and, but they continued and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, what am I going to do? And, Again, this was always the same scenario every single time. And then after it would show me whatever it was going to show me, the screen would then disappear, go black. And I would wake up in my room and I would be in full sleep paralysis. Mm. So, again, none of this comes with any instruction guide on, you know, how to, you know, deal with all this stuff. And you know, being in the paranormal, I'd heard a lot of people talk about sleep paralysis. And so I'm starting to think or convince myself somehow that my abilities that I have are somehow from some like guardian angel or some kind of, you know, spirit guide trying to tell me things that were coming and that the sleep paralysis was just part of, you know, my psychic abilities and because I'm intercepting these messages. And I convinced myself, along with other people, kind of added, you know, to mm -hmm. make me feel that way. Yeah. Until one day. And I had this really strange experience. And I, I went, go to sleep. I wake up in this circle room. And... I walk up there and uh, the first thing that I see is the, the the video is no longer of anything that's about to come. It was literally like a slideshow in fast forward of my life, but it was only the most traumatic and negative things that had happened in my life. And not only where I was I seeing it, but I was like re-experiencing all the trauma. And I literally, it, then it goes black. I drop on my knees and I literally just start screaming. Like, I don't understand. Like, what do you want from me? Like, yeah. just tell yeah. me whatever it is you want. I'll, I'll do it. Just tell me. And I look up, the screen is gone. But what I can see is now what's beyond and i can see this round circle which looks like a, you know a window so i go and i walk over to it and i look outside and to my surprise i'm seeing 
stars and like space. And the interesting thing is when I have these precog dreams, I'm still very cognitive of what is going on, you know? And so I'm like, have all this critical thinking and I'm thinking, oh my God, like this, I'm seeing space. I must be in space. Like how in the world can I be in space? I'm asleep mm -hmm. and maybe this is a dream. And I look and I can see what looks to be the sun like directly in front of me. And then I look to the right and I can see what looks to be earth. And then I see this big like explosion come out from the sun, which now I would assume is a solar flare. Mm -hmm. And right at that moment, the window that I was looking at closed upon itself. So now I'm trying to like process what has just happened because now I'm in a whole different headspace because, okay, what am I doing in space? Mm -hmm. And so I'm looking around and the only thing that comes to my brain is all my, my whole young life. I always watch Star Trek, right? Mm -hmm. And in any room that you wanted to get out, you would go and you would just put your hand up on, you know, a certain space and the, the doors would open. Yep. And I walked to this one area and I put my hand up just like you would do in Star Trek. And I know it sounds crazy, but these two doors open. So now I'm like in shock, but I'm also scared, but I'm also kind of inquisitive, like what in the world, where am I at? So I look, you know, down out of the doorway and I can see like a long hallway and it's got like little LED lights that are on either side of the walkway, but very low lit. Mm -hmm. But I can definitely see that it's long and I both ways. So, you know, I'm thinking at this point, like, I don't know how to get back to my bed or, you know, out of this, what I'm assuming is a dream at this point. Uh, how do I get out of this? How do I break this? But I can't, I don't know because I've never experienced this part before, or at least I thought. So at this point I look to the left, I look to the right, I'm left-handed. Mm -hmm. So for me, the left is always the right way to go. So yeah. I, leave out of, and I start going down this hallway and the doors close behind me. Now, mm. thinking back, like that should have been like a big red flag because I need to get back in there, don't I, to be able to get back to wherever I got to go. Right. <laughs> and I barely knew how I got the doors open. I surely don't know how to get back in there. So yeah. I just start walking and I walk and I walk and I walk and it's just, you know, a long hallway. And then I get to the end of the hallway and you could turn right or just there was a wall straight. And so as I go, I make this right. And the first thing that I'm encountered with is a big like security door, like a laboratory door with the code and everything. And then I look again to the right and I see this big, tall, like glass window. And behind this glass window are little cubicles. And they, from interviewing people from for years, these are exactly what have been described to me as human alien hybrid fetuses or embryos in different stages. Mm -hmm. The lower in the bottom, the smaller they were, the higher to the top, the more advanced they were. And as soon as I see this, now again, mind you, I've never had any experiences, or at least I didn't think I had, to make me feel this way. This was all based on interviews that I had had and done with people who had been abducted in the past. Mm -hmm. But now I'm I'm panicking because now I'm thinking, okay, in that room, circular room, I look out, I'm in space, here I am, there's a laboratory, oh, there's, you know, alien human embryos, oh my God, this is not good. Nothing that I've ever been told by people who have experienced anything like this, does it ever turn out good? So I panic and I'm like, okay, I don't know how I'm gonna get back in that room, but I gotta get back as quick as I can. So I go to run around the corner and down the hallway and I run directly into two guys, tall guys. They had black camo uh, uniforms on like the military. Um, 
so immediately I start looking for any like insignia, any patches, anything that can I can identify if they're in the military or what they are, but they don't. And what's weird is they had like almost like riot gear helmets on. Mm -hmm. So I could only see to like at the bottom of their nose, but their their jawline, they looked exactly the same, but they almost looked like mannequins. Okay. And the other strange thing was is that they both had like an assault rifle type of thing. You know, the military that have an assault rifle over sure. their shoulder. I saw that too. And I'm thinking in my brain, I'm panicked, but I'm thinking, oh my God, like, why would you, if we're on a alien craft, why would you need a gun? Like, why would the military be here? What, like, none of this is making any sense. And within two seconds, they put something up to my arm and I completely, that was it. And I, yeah, I wake up and I am in what looks to be, a big room there is a bed there uh like a medical bed uh and the one thing and now again <laughs> the one thing is i look and i am actually strapped to this table okay. and i'm trying to think because any time that i've ever heard about people being abducted i've never heard about them being strapped down i've always heard yeah. that they can just the aliens can just with their mind just paralyze it. you yeah. So I'm like, oh my God, well, what does this mean? And about right about that time, I see two little what we would, you know, general society would consider grays, these little three foot, you know, uh, high little beings walk in and they come to either side of me. And telepathically, this thing is trying to tell me to calm down. It's going to be okay. I'm going to be all right. And I'm absolutely, that is not trying to come for me whatsoever it is making me panic even more because now it's like okay now i'm seeing alien oh my god like where in the world am i at I, and about I, that I, i'm sorry I, I hate to interrupt you but i i do need to get in a break here yes, um, go ahead. and this is i mean this is in, incredible so why don't we why don't we do this let's get in a break here uh when we come back we gotta hear more of what's happening here and what happened to christina this is really incredible and any questions you have put them in the comments you're listening to Ghost Box Radio on AM 950. Are you one of thousands of individuals who know you have psychic abilities but don't know how to tap into your higher self? Refined Divine is an extremely gifted psychic medium who offers classes that can help you reach your goals. Refined Divine holds classes Monday and Thursday at our two locations and via Zoom. Classes consist of manifestation, learning psychic abilities, shadow work, and healing trauma. Refined Divine has helped thousands, and she can help you. This is Psychic Medium Dev. You can go to refinedivinepsychic.com. Greg Bakken here. Like you, I love good, fresh, delicious food. So I want to tell you about this treasure in Roseville called Maverick's Real Roast Beef. Maverick's has the best roast beef sandwiches I've ever had. Made fresh, every order. Add fries or onion rings dropped in the fryer when ordered, and you have a winning combination. Maverick's Real Roast Beef has a lot more than roast beef, so check out their website, maverick'sbeef.com, or check out their restaurant on Lexington in Roseville. Reach your highest level of consciousness and well-being with metamorphosisconnections.com. Metamorphosisconnections.com is an online directory of the best holistic and metaphysical practitioners to help you make your most informed choices. You can search metamorphosisconnections.com for classes, events, wellness and life coaches, plus metaphysical products and shops. You can also search for a wide array of healers from all modalities, including EFT, sound healing, energy healing, light therapy, ancestral healing, shamanic healing, reflexology, past life regressions, hypnotherapy, yoga, and more. And if you're not sure where to start, the search feature on metamorphosisconnections.com is tailored to help both those who know what they are looking for and those who are just starting. Come explore the possibilities for your higher self by visiting metamorphosisconnections.com. Their experienced practitioners can guide both beginners and those that are already on their spiritual journey. That's metamorphosisconnection.com, your link to direct you on your spiritual transformation. Did you know that spiritual awakening is not all love and light? Surprise! Inner demons, ego deaths, and tower moments are on the horizon. But while life might hand you some harsh lessons, we've got the antidote to soothe your weary soul. 
Why not try a Dragon's Blood Bath? Or schedule a Reiki Aura Repair? With books, herbs, talismans, candles, and more, we put the Shazam in shadow work. Visit Magus Books at 1848 Central Avenue Northeast in Minneapolis or MagusBooks.com. The Tilted Tiki, located in downtown Stillwater, helps you get your tropical tiki vibe on with a large selection of fantastic-tasting tiki cocktails served in unique and fun glasses, a menu of delicious food ranging from small bites, craft tacos, sandwiches, and more. Plus, don't forget they have live music Wednesday through Saturday nights. Located in downtown Stillwater, the Tilted Tiki is your tropical relaxation restaurant in Minnesota. Visit thetiltedtiki.com. Come on out to the Charvinity Psychic and Healing Fair in collaboration with Maria Shaw Minneapolis Convention, May 18th and 19th at the Doubletree by Hilton Minneapolis Airport Hotel, formerly known as the Marriott Airport Hotel. The Charvinity Psychic and Healing Fair features a selection of highly skilled and exceptional local psychic readers, healers, and practitioners ensuring a wide array of premium services like Reiki, past life regression, and so much more. All practitioners offer something unique to help you. You can pre-book practitioners before going to the event and even possibly win a gift basket by visiting five or more practitioners at the fair. Also, if you pre-book and prepay for a 30-minute session, you get a weekend pass for Maria's classes for free, normally a $59 value. And the first 25 people who show up Saturday and Sunday will get a free gift bag. Charvinity Psychic and Healing Fair is May 18th and 19th at the Doubletree by Hilton, Minneapolis Airport, 9 to 5 both days. It's only $10 to get in. Visit CharvinityFairs.com for all the details. And join me tomorrow on Ghost Box Radio with Greg Bakken. We're going to have all the way from the UK, we're going to have author Neil Story. He's going to talk about his book, Bram Stoker, author of Dracula, an illustrated biography. Uh, Neil knows a lot about a lot of great things, and we're going to have a great conversation tomorrow. I hope you're able to join us for that. We're having a fantastic conversation right now uh, with uh, Christina George. Uh, she is the host of the Paraconnections radio show, and uh, I felt bad. I, I had to interrupt you, and we only have about nine minutes left. So I just want to kind of let you know where we're at here. I have a lot of questions. Okay. I have, I, I and you know, and I don't want to jump ahead with uh, where you're going with the story because I, I have like my own ideas of where things go, where we left off though. Uh, you were, you were on board something that, you know, the way you're telling it, it sounds like a, a ship of some kind, like a, a spaceship. You are, you, you are, basically knocked out now you are awake on a bed but you are you're secured to it uh you're, you're strapped into it and i think that's where we kind of left off yeah well right after that i saw about five or six guys come in um, i'm assuming they were some kind of doctors they did all have lab coats on and you know surgical masks and hats they had clipboards they were talking one of them left then they came back in with a tray with a cover over it and i'm an ex-nurse so it, it, that's a sterile tray it's usually not anything that's going to be pleasant let's just put it that way yeah. so again immediately i i'm panicking even more than i panicked before but there's nothing i can do i can't move i can just move my eyes they bring the tray around to my right side and slowly i see them take the cover off and take something off and come towards me. I can't see what they're doing, but I then feel something um, actually crawl into my ear. Crawl and, into your ear, you say? Yes. Okay. Yes. And which, which, is good, that, which is good, Christina, because you like Star Trek. And if you saw Star Trek 2, that thing crawled into Chekhov's ear. So. I don't mean to put oh. like a bit, but you know. yeah, no, yeah, it was nothing that I thought was pleasant. And then I woke up, and at this point, I am in my bed, uh, full on sleep paralysis. Yeah, uh, like something right out of you know, uh, just out of a movie. Like my jaw was, you know, uh, locked all the way open, as if I was just screaming, but nothing was coming out, and all I could think of is that my young grandson and my daughter were in the room right next door. My grandson, as soon as he mm -hmm. would wake up, he would immediately come to 
come in my room. So I was afraid that he would find me. And I laid there for about an hour. I eventually was able to move like a finger or something and it broke. And immediately I knew something was wrong. I, I was, something was not right. Mm. And I literally had all of these memories like that were flooding me. And I jumped up, I grabbed some clothes, I grabbed my keys, I jumped in my car and I took off up in t- towards the mountains. Mm -hmm. And immediately, my only thought was I needed to drive right off the mountainside. And I, that was my plan. I drove and then all of a sudden, right before I went over the embankment, I hit the brakes and I literally stopped just a few inches from the car going over and just had like a complete meltdown because this was not me. This is, I would not even think like that. Like I had right. no control over my thoughts. So I did call in uh, team members. Uh, actually one of my team members happened to be a uh, regression hypnotherapist mm-hmm. who specialized in abductees. Now, again, I still don't believe I'm an abductee in any way, shape or form. I really feel like this is just a really bad dream. And so I ended up having regression, um, got some answers, come to find out uh, a whole lot more questions, as I said earlier. Uh, but it looks like I have been um, taken and experimented in a, like a my lab program uh, for since I was very young, mm-hmm. which is why I just kind of knew what to do in that, in that circular room, room, how to get out of it, all of that. So. So I, I got a couple questions. We have about sure. uh, s- uh, five minutes or so before we we have to close up here. But you know, you you mentioned things that happened during this that seem very earthly to me in a little bit as well. Do you think that? And and I don't say that as doubting what you're saying one bit. I do not doubt one bit what you're saying. My question actually is: Is this some sort of hybrid program? That is, uh, that is not just any sort of alien, but maybe there's also some earthly input to it as well. Yeah, this is definitely from what I was able to find out and understand is this is like it is a program with aliens along with military, which is why yeah. the fatigues, why all of that. Um, strangely enough, like researching back through my history, uh, I come to find out like we actually have generations of very, very high ranking Freemasons. Mm -hmm. All of my family, all of the men have all been in the military. And there are, when I look, there are a lot of correlations. Um, It has actually brought me back to talk to a lot of people I have brought on the show before that have been part of my lab, um, just to try to see if there are similarities uh, but one of the things was, is that there was uh, during this regression, I um, had said that the people who give me all this information, that their name were the watchers. And I actually had um, drew a picture of what they look like. Mm-hmm. And strangely enough, she had uh, my team member who did the regression actually had another client who had a very similar situation and literally went and got this piece of paper out of a binder that this other client had had written as well or uh, had drawn as well, looked exactly alike as well as she said it was the watchers. So again, it's, uh, you know, a lot more questions that has opened up because I always just thought that this was all just the paranormal and I just had a, you know, keen interest in, you know, the alien stuff and beyond. So uh, one, one more question uh, that I, I've, I've, I've hear people who have had uh, similar experiences that you've had when it comes to like incubation, uh, alien incuba- incubation. Uh, uh, this is a serious question. Uh, do you know of any like support groups or people that are groups in general that talk about having like dreams like you've had where there is like a, like they're seeing children that are, you know, black eyed and, and alien this, you know, but yet there's human form to them as well, because I think there's people who need to talk about their experiences with other like-minded people. 
Yeah, um, there actually are there. And to be absolutely honest, they're very private groups. Yeah, um, makes sense. It, just because I've interviewed certain people, <laughs> you know, they've given me access to, you know, and, it, and put me in these groups. But yes, there are uh, tons. In uh, fact, I'm going to be having a guest on my show here uh, shortly that runs one of those support groups. And yes, there are many women and men yes. that uh, are taken and they go and visit their children, their hybrid children. Uh, and mm -hmm. I, I've had you know plenty of people come on and tell you now, I, I've only done one session of regression. Um, that was kind of enough for me at the time. It, I've had to really decompress and really kind of let this all sink in uh, because this was a whole nother layer that I wasn't expecting. And I always have known that the paranormal and the other fields, ufology, cryptology, is all connected. But boy, oh boy, was this a reality check for me because <laughs> now I know. I, I, I totally believe it. What, why don't we do this? Uh, Christina, we need to have you back on the program. There's so much more that we need to talk about here. This was, sure. I think you probably opened a lot of people's eyes tonight. And I want to be in touch with you regarding maybe someone who could reach out about this as well, what we talked about tonight. Absolutely. Uh, Christina, Christina George, you can find her on the Paranormal Connection Show. Christina, thank you so very much. Thank you. And we'll be back tomorrow with a new story. Everyone take care and have a great night.